In the late 1970s, Philip Kahn Gotanda was a singer, writing songs about being Asian American, a term which had only recently been coined. I was a jazz violinist who accompanied him and became his side man. We were based in San Francisco, played gigs in Southern California, and toured north as far as Vancouver. All that time, we also hoped to become playwrights. When our plays started to be performed in the 80s, Philip, you remain my inspiration, my barely older brother, my friend, the guy who wrote the music. You showed by example how to put the art first, even when the career became more stressful, and how, as we grew older, to maintain the soul of youth by working with new forms, new genres, and a new generation of collaborators. Because you once apprenticed to a potter in Japan, you taught me about wabi-sabi, the understanding that existence is transient and the acceptance of imperfection which makes true beauty possible. Philip, you're much less imperfect than the rest of us and maybe for that reason have continued to make theater, the most transient of forms, truly beautiful. I can't imagine a worthier recipient for the Legacy Award. Congratulations from your side man. Hey, Philip. I cannot imagine a worthier recipient of the Legacy Award than Philip Cam Catanda. Philip, you and I have known each other since the early 1980s in San Francisco. It was my privilege to be your partner for a decade, working on shows as dramaturg, as producer, occasionally as director, which was an enormous honor. And throughout all of it, I was impressed by your integrity, your fearlessness, your devotion to other artists, your incredibly collaborative spirit, and the fact that you were willing to go into subject matters that nobody else had gone into. The Avocado Kid, American Tattoo, dealing with the legacy of racism and the camps here in the United States, to the beautifully experimental day standing on its head, which we did here in New York at Manhattan Theatre Club, just gorgeously original work, to the quiet naturalism of shows like The Wash, all of them demonstrating a humanity, a beauty of writing, a clarity of image, and an ability to take inspiration from many different forms and bring it together into the theater that is unparalleled. Philip, you're one of the closest working partners I've ever had. I admire you enormously, and I'm incredibly proud of you tonight. Perhaps what is most satisfying about the Legacy Playwrights Initiative is that it isn't about one of my plays at one moment in time, a set of values and political views uh, at that moment. Rather, it is about a body of my work, in my particular instance, some odd 40 plus plays, over a lifetime spent in the theater, in which case, some four decades. And for a playwright, as I at this point in his career, the thought that all of my works, that continuum of ideas is being acknowledged is tremendously satisfying. At this point, I would also like to take the time for something more important, and that is to urge that we as American theater now more than ever reflect the true face and condition of this country. Tell the stories that must be told. BIPOC, POC, LGBTQ, disabled, and other underrepresented communities. We must tell the story, then tell it again, and then tell it again, and tell it again. Soul of the country is at stake at this moment, and we must play our part in its healing. I'd also like to acknowledge some individuals who were extremely helpful in my career along the way. Uh, Oscar Eustace, Sharon Ott, Carrie Perloff, and Catano, Mako, Eric Hayashi. I'd also like to thank those folks who were responsible for the initiative, and Catano, Todd London, uh, Benita Hofstetter-Coleman, and the executive director, Rachel Ruth. 
Thank you.